Welcome to the Hope, Health, and Healing Podcast. I am Michelle Hannah-Fields, and I am your host for episode 20, where I am joined by my good friend, Alicia Munden. This is part one of a two-part series where she shares her story of faith. She talks about what it looked like for her growing up in church, but never actually coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ and fully understanding his great love for her until she was 30 years old. She also shares how God directs your steps and how you can look back over your life and even seeing through childhood trauma, how he was there, how his goodness guided her and how he protected her in those moments, even though it may not have seemed like it at the time. She also shares what it looks like to walk through forgiveness and healing from that abuse. She also says and shares how God is truly concerned about every detail of our life and the small things that matter to us also matter to Him. So sit back, relax with your favorite cup of coffee or beverage of your choice and let Alicia's story inspire and encourage you today. Thank you for joining me today on Hope, Health, and Healing. I am joined by my good friend, Alicia Munden. Alicia comes to us from Texas, so the great state of Texas. And I always like to share how I know people. So Alicia and I met several years ago through the health program that we both coach. And I had seen her many times on trainings. And when I finally got the opportunity to meet her in person, I just felt this connection and just fell in love with who Alicia is. She is a precious, precious lady and has such a beautiful story, but she also has a beautiful heart, a heart for serving people and a heart for sharing Jesus. And I love that those two things intertwine all the time. Um, So thank you, Alicia, for being my guest today. Thank you so much, Michelle. And you know what? Likewise, you know, kindred spirits, right? That's right. what I, what what I remember the most about our first meeting is you learned that my husband was a cowboy. Yeah. And and remember you said, "What about those cowboys in Texas?" Mm-hmm. And I said, you're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna find an amazing man one yeah. day, and he's gonna find you, and the union is gonna be beautiful. And that has been a celebration over the last what year? Has it been yeah. a year? Most a year we've been married. Yep. Yeah. That is so now, I remember, that. I remember um, messaging you and saying, Hey, Alicia, uh, be on the lookout for me, a cowboy. I love cowboys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think um, the cowboys that I know I would want to introduce you to right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the Lord had other plans for you, and uh, you didn't have to move to Texas. It's hot. It's hot yeah. here in the summertime. And so, anyways, but yeah, it's such a joy um, to get to do life together in in many roles, you know, like uh, with health coaching. But not only that, we've been able to um, celebrate your your marriage, and then we've you know been able to celebrate, um, but you know, sisters in Christ together and share and be real and authentic. Um, because as it is uh, an amazing journey, it doesn't come without needing support and community and like-minded thinking because some days I'm going to be at about 90% and you're going to be at about 10 and then some days you're going to be 100% and I'm going to be zero and it's going to take both of us to join together to encourage each other to um, to really walk out this life, right? Yeah, yeah. And so- you know, and, and then I love that God gives us different talents to, you know, and he knows how to knit people together with yeah. certain talents so that, you know, together you can do great things. So I love that. Love Two are better than one. And that's not just talking about marriage. Uh, you know, it's in prayer. It's uh, it's in projects. It's in collaboration. Uh, and really, if you're a believer, then there's really more than two of us, right? Because the Holy Spirit is here uh, always, and then it's the three. But anyways, it's it really is a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful relationship and a beautiful time 
um, when you do have that Holy Spirit in the midst of all the things too. So anyways, I think it just escalates the relationship more because we can, we can connect. That's right. That's right. Well, tell us a little bit about who Alicia is, um, what, how your faith journey began and just give us a little insight. Well, Alicia uh, is a wife of Justin and a mom of McKay. And I have a son-in-law named Alex, uh, and we have a grandbaby named A.V. She's two and a half, and she is giving her parents sassy fits right now, and um, and it's wonderful. <laughs> it's so funny to see it, you know, because as a grandma, I want to fix all the things, and I'm just like, no, they're the parents. We're going to let them do the things, and um, anyways, it's just funny. McKay says, is this ever going to end? I'm like, not right now. Not right now, hon, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And then uh, you have parents- back. That's right. Y'all are parenting and that's what you signed up for. This is awesome. But anyways, um, Justin and I uh, own a construction company uh, outside of health coaching. And then Justin is also uh, a salesman for large projects of roads and bridges. Um, I did hair for 27 years prior coming home uh, to serve people in a whole different capacity. Um, I've really kind of been doing the same thing. Uh, in all careers across the board, as far as marketing and and encouragement, uh, transformation, it just looks a little bit different now than what it did uh, starting out. And so uh, we live in LaRue, Texas, which is no bigger than a quarter. (laughs) It literally is. There's about four families here now, including us. And if you know one of each family, then you know them all. it's a fun little community. We sold a big home and downsized into a small home just recently, did a full remodel. And uh, that is also a passion of mine. I love to um, I love to take things and completely change them into new styles. It's almost my goal to never have the same style twice in a house, you know, mm-hmm. so I don't usually move things and reuse them. Or if I do, I use them differently. I've paint them or what have you, but that is another passion of mine. So um, I've always been in in transformation, decoration, and um, and I like to teach people how to do that on a budget um, and how to make it look good and how to love the space that you live in. And um, so with that being said, I also like to teach people to love where they live in, in their hearts, and then also, you know, in their health. Um, and that's all, all of it, mentally, physically, emotionally, um, because Michelle, I've lived in, I've lived in this house, uh, meaning my own body, um, and, and, and have not loved it, uh, physically. And then sometimes when I loved it physically, I didn't love it emotionally. And so to work on all the things to match up and, uh, it, it really is just a process. Every single day is a process. The Bible says that we're, we will not be complete until the day of completion. <laughs> and that day of completion, we will be standing in front of the, in front of the father. So um, one way or another, that's the completion. And so with that being said, I just know that I'm in this for the long haul. And, uh, and so I'm going to work on all the parts together. So uh, I was also raised in church. Um, I can't say that it was a healthy environment as far as, I'm not saying the church was not the healthy environment. I think, I think that my, um, my mother was doing the very best that she could do and that she wanted to raise her children in church. Um, and there was things going on in our home that, you know, was a lot of opposing forces, a lot of opposing forces. So I was a church goer until I was almost 30. And when I was almost 30, I'll never forget this day. I, uh, my pastor preached uh, out of a scripture in Psalms and it was David. And he was talking about uh, just the sin in his body and the, in his bones wasting away. And I'll never forget that thinking to myself, like, I don't feel good. Like, I don't feel good. Uh, it had nothing to do with physical. It was all, you know, it was all spiritual. And so my husband was a deacon in the church. And um, 
And so I brought those feelings to my husband and just, I said, I, I don't know that I know anything about Jesus's love for me. I only know what he has done for me, but I don't know that I know that. And so that day, my husband, the deacon, um, just escorted me into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And um, I think, you know, we used to call Justin, just in time. <laughs> and so my life uh, looked different, you know, before Justin. And even though Justin got saved after we got married, mm -hmm. uh, he he led me to Christ shortly after that. And, and of course, I don't want to be like the rest. It's history because it just started. <laughs> We, we've been making history ever since. But anyway, all that to say, uh, I met the Lord in my 30s or it right at my 30s. And um, and I've learned so much about him. I've learned so much about him as a father, a, a true father figure in my life. Uh, I've learned about him as a friend, as a comforter, um, as that peace. I've, I've learned about him as um, as a truth teller that will always speak so much truth into my life. I've just learned so much about Jesus that I can I can tell you what it does for me versus me just telling you what he can do for you. And so um, I think that, that's, that's where. True. Yeah, I think that's true with a lot of people, especially when you grow up in church. Um you know, I think sometimes we get so used to just going to church and going through the motions that we never stop to think about the relationship. And I think you're you're not alone there. Like so many people have gone through church and sit in church services and they never figure that out. Like it is a relationship and it's the relationship that really changes things for you. That's yeah. the big, you know, John 10, 10 about coming to give you life abundantly. You know, I think you can know, I think you can know the Lord. I, I think you can, you can have had an encounter with the Lord and you know that there's something different and you know the source, but I feel like he gave his entire life for us to have that life of abundance here. And then whenever I read on earth as it is in heaven, well, my mind, and I'm sure you're, we cannot even comprehend what that is. And so when I think about that, there's been times in my life that it was not on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> I mean, and, and even since I met him, you know, so, but I know that that's what he wants for me here. That's what yeah. he wants for me here. And um, because eternity it's going to be amazing no matter what, right? I mean, it no matter what, if you are in, in Jesus, that's, that's, but I know he didn't just place me here on this earth to be ho-hum until I got there. Yeah. And so, you know, I want to, I want that. I want everything that he went to the cross for, for me so that I can live that for someone else. I do not hit the mark every day. I can tell you that. But I, that's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah. It's all about striving to be more like Christ. You know, it's, yeah. and we, we aren't going to be perfect. I, I remember in, in sermons, my uncle said, you know, there are days that I make A's. There's days I make B's. There's days I make C's and D's. And there are days I make F's. <laughs> but my heart is postured to where I'm always in a, like David, I have a heart after God. I have a heart of repentance. And when I miss that mark, you know, I'm quick to repent and be like, oh gosh, I just, I just missed that. You know, help me, help me to get it right next time, you know? And I think that that's the journey of, you know, growing to know him, living to serve him, and then falling in love with him again. And it's that cycle. Um, and it's that, you know, the, the Lord's prayer said, give us this day our daily bread. Like it's a daily walk with him. It's it's something that you have to 
fight with daily, just like your physical health. You have to contend for that daily, and it's the same spiritually. You know, if if you can't just go to the table one time and that be it, you've got to eat every day. You got to eat every day, six times a day too. That's right. <laughs> we, we won't. That's a, that's getting in the weeds, but yes, we have to eat that day the red every single day, every yeah. single day. So yeah, so uh, so early on in my faith, uh, I. I, you know, but I, I can remember times, Michelle, just like even um, I had grabbed a Bible that I was going to talk about. I had grabbed a, a, a student Bible. If you remember, you know, when the student Bibles came out and they had a checklist, the Lord was already preparing my heart. Um, I was, I had McKay and I was single, uh, our, my, my daughter and uh, our daughter. And so I can remember this, there was checklist in the back of this Bible and I was learning about things. I was learning about how to give and learning how to serve and things like that. And so the Lord was already preparing me um, for that day that I finally was able to comprehend uh, who and what he was and what he does. I, and, you know, I'd been through some childhood trauma. Um, and so I think a lot of it was, uh, was a guard of my, you know, I never wanted to feel the feels mm -hmm. and every time, you know, every time I say, if you don't feel the feels when you're in the presence of God, then I'm not going to, I won't ever say, then you should, you should feel that. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying every time I'm in the presence of God, I'm feeling the feels and, um, and I, you know, I just, I didn't have, I didn't have that, but I know that whenever uh, this became such a revelated word to me versus the boxes and the plans that I was checking, but the boxes and the plans that I was checking were so valuable in that time because I can remember that little glimpse of hope Yeah, box checked that I read. If it didn't build anything, it built me some confidence in the word and confidence in giving and confidence in serving. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, yeah. And I think too, you know, talking about, um, you know, when you go through childhood trauma and not wanting to feel, and you know, that can really, you, you put this wall up and it's hard to be reached <laughs> and it takes the Holy spirit just breaking that wall down piece by piece by piece and you know you learn to trust and and he does he guides you through a checklist that he has in the back of that book um something led you to that checklist and it was the holy spirit you know leading you to that and walking you through that and i think every time you go through one of those you know a checklist or you know uh you know a, a bible study or devotion and it points you to a scripture it may be a scripture that maybe you don't need for today, mm -hmm. but God knows what you're going to be faced with. And in that moment in time, he'll bring that back to you. And so he's planting those seeds all along and then watering it until your heart is ready to really understand the depth of his love. And, you know, I think so many times when we walk through those hard things, it's hard for us when we've been betrayed by somebody who should have never betrayed us, that's, that's the way we feel like it's hard for us to understand that, that God is that loving father that will never betray us. Like he's always looking out for our best interest. He's always got the best for us and loves us the best, loves us the deepest, loves us the purest. But until we can really get into the word and and really understand that for ourselves, it's kind of hard to to realize just what that means and what that looks like, especially if you face some childhood trauma, because sure. you you've lost a little bit of trust and and I've I was in a um I was doing a Bible study. And um, I don't remember which one it was because I do so many of them and they all kind of run together. But one of the things she said, she was talking about trust. 
and trusting God. And sometimes we we hold God to the same level of trust that we would hold a person. But people fail us. And so then we cast that onto God and say, well, God will fail me too. Because this trust was broken. And so he's going to break that trust too. But then we find that it's totally opposite. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think too, uh, then that tr- some of that trust is broken too. Like where you you look and you uh, you question his protection or things like that. But really, once you start analyzing, once you grab a hold of, of you know, the that love and peace and things like that, once you start grabbing a hold of that, like you can, then you can really see, you can really see the protection, you know, versus, and so you're, you're right. You know, it's, it's, it is a wall that has to just be broken down. Um, I don't know where the scripture is, but, it, you know, talking about a cow chewing on its cud and regurgitates and chews it again. And that's, that's kind of like, to me, those checklists, those Bible studies, those things and different times in your life where you, where you might be exposed to that part of the word. And then 10 years later or five years later, it, you know, you regurgitate that and, she, and it's got a different nutrients or, you know, it's not n- different nutrients. It's the, you know, they cows chew their cud to get all the nutrients, not just some of it. And so, you know, it's continuously giving you nutrition um, at different times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. for- Whatever you go through, you know, and you can read the same scripture a hundred times and a hundred times get what you need for that day. Yes, absolutely. And never see, I'm like, I never saw that scripture like that. Yeah. you know, Because I didn't need it like that that day. Right. Or that yeah. season. I love that. And, you know, it's so true. Just, you know, how the things that you know, you need, like God brings that back to you so that you can get that nourishment again out of that. And, and I think too, that's, that's why I think it's so important for us as we're walking through things, I call them marked moments. And so if you remember when the children of Israel, Joshua led them um, through the Jordan, he said, let's set these stones up as a memorial. And then when your children's children and your children's children's children come back and they're like, what are these stones for? You can tell them the story of how God delivered. And so those marked moments in your faith, I think too, that you can point back to and and some of those times that are like, I know God worked in my life in this situation. I'm going to, I call it putting a stake in the ground. I'm going to put a stake in the ground right here with a flag to mark it. And then next time I'm walking through something really hard, I can look back to that faithfulness of God and say, I know he was faithful then. And so I know he's going to be faithful now. Um, what's one of those marked moments for you in, in your journey? Oh, gosh. Well, I have a bunch of them. Um, you know, Justin and I, uh, I mean, we've been through a lot, uh, really, as a couple and, and uh, you know, as far as a staked moment, so I, I will say, like, uh, when I look back, right, right after, right after I, I really turned my life over to the Lord, um, I confronted a sexual abuser, and I, that marked something in my life, and, you know, it's so funny, because I thought I was so weak uh, in that moment, and now I look back, I'm like, you know, that was one of the most courageous things you've ever done in your entire life. Wow. You know, to ask questions and, and then I sought some counseling after that because it was important Mm -hmm. to me to learn how to forgive Mm -hmm. and not be as bitter as I was for the first 20 years of my life or yeah, that there, that 20 year span and, and even though I had some issues afterwards, you know, um, I guess I would say bitter, bitter, but you know, it was, I was still digging up the roots, digging up the roots, but, uh, that, that was one of the, the things in my life that I knew that the Lord was so faithful. I'll, I'll never forget this part. 
Um, and it didn't even come through a, it didn't even come through a Bible study or a person or anything, you know, or, you know, a relationship like, like what we're talking uh, because I've, I've been exposed to, you know, prophetic words and things like that, that I knew were exact were for me because I might be praying for uh, some, some, something. And somebody said that one thing specifically to me <laughs> and I was like, I get it. Okay. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear, Lord, you know, don't make a big deal out of it. I was like, well, I get it. I, I'm hearing, but um, it was, it was the first um, you know, cause I was an adult whenever I confronted, uh, the sexual abuse and, uh, I, and, and I'll never forget. I was laying on the couch and had my dog. I always have a dog and, um, I had my dog and, and I was, I felt like I was so alone. I was so alone. Uh, I had confronted this person. I had told my family, um, my parents had divorced. Um, I mean, it, it was, it was just, I was just alone. And even though I had the beautiful support of my husband, it was not the same. And I was laying on the couch, uh, and it was a holiday and, you know, we had an only child and we celebrated this holiday by ourselves mm -hmm. and it was rough. It was really rough and, uh, processing things. And Carrie Job, which is a worship singer, uh, was brand spanking new, brand spanking new. I bet she was not 21 years old. Beautiful girl, beautiful girl. Her and I was not alone. Huh? Yes. And I was flipping through the TV. Well, it wasn't I'm not alone. It was before that. Really? Uh, I was flipping through the TV and I stopped on TBN and this beautiful girl with this voice that was so powerful and angelic I guess it, I don't know that I've ever heard an angel but if if I do that's what I imagine it sounds like how you imagine it I don't know, I don't know I'm just imagining and the words when I couldn't even sing it I couldn't even say them forever but the the song was I know that you are for me and it, but she was singing it in Spanish mm -hmm. and and I stopped and I listened and I don't speak Spanish. I don't, I don't know. But then she sang it in English, but it was, what are the chances that I would land on this and listen to the, this, because it was such a, a marker. It was a worship moment for me that I knew that the Lord was for me and I, I was not alone. I was not alone and that I was going to get on the other side of this. And it was going to take some time and it was, you know, it was just, but, but I, I, I knew that I had done the right thing for myself and for my family and for generations. Um, and, and, you know, that loneliness was just taken over in that season because it was different than what we'd ever done before. You know, we'd always swept a lot of things on the rug, had big celebrations and, and just, we ne it never got nothing ever got addressed nothing and so it was courageous and uh and you know the enemy immediately was like what have you what have you done what have you done and then the lord was like i'm i'm for you i yeah. am so and so that that was one of the markers the the first marker that i have you know and that's that's one of the ones that I can remember. I will tell you another one that I just had just recently. Um, I am forever purging, forever purging because I redo houses and I move. So, you know, I'm, I'm always purging. You might need and, to come to Georgia. Oh gosh. I, I mean, well, let me tell you, you may not give me an invitation after you hear the story. So um, there is a, when we moved uh, McKay, our daughter, had, we moved right when she got married. And so we had childhood stuff from her, college, cheerleading stuff, all the things, sorority. I mean, and so of course we stored them, you know, for, for her for a while. But, um, and so, you know, I was putting stuff up, had tubs out and all the things. And I honestly do not know how this happened. And I was already, uh, I was already getting way healthy in my 
in my body and I was feeling good, had lots of energy. And um, it wasn't that I was not close to, listen, we probably have a hundred Bibles in this house, at all different versions, all different seasons. I mean, you know, it's just, it's how it is. We get them for gifts or, or uh, merit prizes or whatever, you know, Justin's been in the ministry before, so that, you know, when he got ordained, he got one. If he performed a wedding, he got one, you know, just things that were gifts, nice gifts. And, um, but I had a Bible that whenever I first got saved, um, I literally was just constantly writing in my Bible. I had a preacher say one time, you know, a, a Bible that's tattered is, you know, the one that's the most fought over at the at funerals. I was like, I want my grandbabies to fight over my Bible. Well, I donated them to a thrift store on accident. Oh. I mean, well, I donated them somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere. So there was a new thrift store that opened up in town and I, I pulled in and if they listen to this, this is, I, they were just opening. So I, it's a little bit, it was a little bit chaos. It was a little chaos. It was not organized. It's not the normal thrift store that I would shop in. I do love thrift, thrifting. So that's not the normal one. When I walked in the door, I, two times I thought, oh, I'm not going to go in. I, I don't. I don't think it's what I want. And then I, anyway, I made eye contact with the person there. I thought I'm, I'm going in. So I went in the door and, uh, I, I, I could tell it wasn't for me, but I didn't want to just walk, turn around and walk out. Cause I, I mean, I'm, I feel like if I'm there, there's a reason I'm there. I'm going to visit with you at least five minutes. Yeah. And so I walk around the corner and they did have one of the most amazing book selections I've ever seen in my life in this and some of them were even roped off I mean they were collectibles and I was I was really impressed at the books mm -hmm. it was chaos but the books and my eye immediately goes to this bible and I thought to myself that bible I had one that color leather one time and it was all cracked up and peeled off like that and I was like, I wonder if all of those Bibles did that, you know. I picked it up. I have it here in my hand, so I know that if you're listening to this, it's not visual. But I picked it up, and this little picture right here, Michelle, is me and McKay. It's a sticker in 2001. Oh, wow. And my eyes, I thought, how, how did this Bible get here? I mean, I was so perplexed. Yeah. Um, anyway, I kept going through here notes and all the things I kept going through here. And I thought, how did this Bible get here? So anyway, I went up to the front desk and I bought it. I bought, it was two, two of my Bibles, the student Bible that I talked about my checklist that really the Lord prepared my heart. And then the one that I had the most growth in my entire walk with him got donated to this, to this thrift store or somewhere. And it got to the thrift store. I paid a dollar for both of them at the desk. And I told the lady after I paid for them, I said, I'm so glad I came in here today. Um, I said, these, these are, these Bibles have my name in them. And she's like, that's odd. I said, no, it's not. They're mine. <laughs> that's, I don't know how they got here. Now that's the odd part. I don't know how they got here. Yeah. But once I started reading in these Bibles and so I could see so much growth, Michelle, and I, I really, I, it, I grieved for a minute because I thought, had I, had I, had I gotten so far away from that growth that this, that this wasn't a treasure to me, yeah. and, and so I, and I did, I didn't even know how I got there. It wasn't that I wasn't reading my Bible. We have technology now and all the things. You know, you get notifications every day. Yeah. Read this, read that. This is your daily scripture. Your oh, your 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 Bible study is now up. Your notes are here. You know all the things. And and I don't think that it was intentional. Of course, it was definitely not intentional for me to give them away. But when I just started reading them, the Lord was just really showing me just those little markers that I had in my life. And there is hundreds of them in this tattered Bible. 
So they have not been out of my sight. I have yeah. lost other things in this move, but I have not lost these. <laughs> and I, you know, Justin, yesterday I said, I probably should go to the thrift store and see if I can't find the things that I've lost. <laughs> I don't know how they got there and uh, it doesn't matter. But what mattered was, is that I found him and showed me again, just how powerful he was in 2001 as he is today. There's a code in here from a prayer room in a little bitty building that we prayed for in, for 24 hours around the clock. And we would all sign up for different times. So when I was telling my daughter about this, she said, I remember that room, uh -huh. you know, and it was something I had forgotten. Yeah. I'd forgotten. And so some things I, I, I don't, you know, I want to hide these things in my heart where I never forget them, which I know life goes on and we do forget things. Yeah. But that day, it wasn't so much of the words that were the marker as it was the day that I found it. Yeah. And I was able to see just how powerful the Lord was has been in my life I love that and you know I think that that's such a good marker and just such a good reminder of his great love for you because mm -hmm. he brought you to that store knowing those Bibles were there and he allowed those to catch your eye like mm -hmm. out of everything that was there that's what caught your eye and I he, wish I would have taken a picture of the entire store so that I could, but I don't want to dishonor those people. I know they just moved in their building yeah. and it was, but I mean, like the odds of finding that yeah. needle in the haystack, I mean, it was for me that day. Yeah. That day. I love that. I love that. I love it when that happens and, and God is gracious to you like that and gives you those little reminders um, you know, I have, I have my dad's Bible. My dad died in 2006. I have his Bible. I have his mother's Bible and she, she passed away in 1982. Um, and I have my granddad's who was my, he was my pastor growing up. I have his Bible and, you know, just looking at my dad's Bible, it's all tattered and torn. The other two aren't so bad, but my dad's Bible is tattered and torn. But there are so many notes in there. Like he was a Sunday school teacher. So I have some of his Sunday school lessons written on there. I can't read his writing, but they're in there. <laughs> but, you know, those kind of things are just so precious. And, and God knows, like, you know, sometimes when, you know, I, I need something, I'll look in there and I'll see something they wrote. And it just, you know, just like your Bible, you, you made those marks in there, those memories in there things God did for you and, and all of that. And it just, it just brings you that strength and comfort for whatever you're facing today or what you may face tomorrow, you know, and I love that he brought it back around to you in such a sweet way, just to give you that, that assurance that he sees you and he knows you and he knows what's important to you for sure. I love that. So Justin has a horse, uh, that is, uh, Justin took a 17 year hiatus from roping and then he purchased a horse that came off of a ranch that was not a roping horse, but he was a very good broke horse, beautiful horse. And, uh, we, we didn't have any, we didn't have any money and we bought him. I mean, we, 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 we over budget, we spent over our budget and he still was cheap. And if anybody's listening to this now that as a horseman knows that they, you, you can't buy anything cheap now if you if you get it in a four legs. I mean, that's just it. So you might get a three-legged horse, but not not a four-legged horse for, for cheap. But Justin bought this horse and started roping off of him. And um, anyway, it's taken him years to get him trained and, and all that. He's big and he's strong and he hasn't felt good for about the last couple of days. And uh, anyway... So last night we gave him some medicine and uh, we were standing outside. And this is what I heard my husband say. He, put, he was putting his hands on him and praying for him, you know, and um, and he was thanking the Lord for him. And he told me he told the Lord as he was praying, he's walking around, he's touching him. And and he said, uh, he said, Lord, you, you gave me this horse 
for that hope again, a hope again. And, um, and he said, he's, he's yours, you know, just he, and, and he said, we, we, we believe he's going to be well, but, um, but he said, you gave him to me to give me back hope and, and we'll forever thank you for this horse, you know, and, and I think about that, you know, so just markers, even things of that nature and of that, um, how you, you know, the Lord just loves us so much. He cares about every single detail that we care about that lines up um, because we've met so many people in that roping circle that I, they've made a massive difference in our life. And I'd like to think that we have theirs. And, and so if we didn't have that horse, we wouldn't have been in that circle right. again. You yeah. Know? And yeah. so the Lord is good. He, he yeah. cares. He cares about the details. He does. He cares. He cares about the littlest thing. And, you know, it's, it's those little things that it means so much to us. Mm -hmm. And because it means so much to us, it means so much to God too. Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, in the Bible, the story of the widow who lost her coins, like God was worried about those coins mm -hmm. and helped her find them. And, you know, I can remember my granddaddy, I, I don't remember what it was he lost one day, but um, he was probably, he was in his 80s, and he had lost something, his glasses, or a key to something, you know, something like that, and I just remember him saying, like, God knows where it is, God knows where those things are, and he said, I asked the Holy Spirit to lead me to them, and sure enough, the Holy Spirit told him to walk to this certain place outside in his yard. And there was whatever it was, his glasses or keys or whatever. And so, you know, to everybody else, to us, that was just insignificant. You know, we'll go get another pair. But to my granddaddy, it was important for him to find that pair on that day. And the Holy Spirit led him there. And it's the same, you know, God is in, in those details and loves showing us how much he loves us by giving us those those little nuggets um, in our lives. So. Thank you for joining us on Hope, Health, and Healing. I know that Alicia's story has given you some encouragement and also some hope in maybe the hard things that you're facing too, to know that God is there with you, that he is guiding you, that he is protecting you, that he is loving you, and that he will keep you through everything that you face. Join us next week as Alicia shares part two of her story. Be sure to like, share, and follow this show. Thank you and have a great day.